Hello and welcome to Wimberley United Methodist Church's worship service for this September 6, 2020. We're so excited to have you join us wherever you are, whatever you are doing. Right now we are worshiping together and that is a beautiful thing. So thank you for being here and it, just take a moment now and center yourself. Remind yourself why it is we do this, why it is that we, we gather together even when we cannot gather together. And just... Get yourself right with God. Think about what this week has held for you. Think about what the week to come holds. Thank God for all that has happened. Thank God that you have an opportunity now to look forward to what God will do in your life and in the world around you. Worship God now the one who is worthy of all our praise, the one who created us, the one who saved us, the one who walks among us still. Let us begin our time of worship with prayer. Holy God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be together, to give you our prayers and our praise. God, receive this time. May it be a blessing to your sight. May it be lovely and pleasing to your ears. And God, may we meet you here in miraculous and divine ways. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Let the 
streets Knees down with singing Some sad bring your hope And some sad bring your joy Dancers who dance upon injustice So did you feel the darkness tremble And all the saints join in one song And all the streams flow as one river To wash away our brokenness Here we see that God is always moving. The time of jubilee is coming. And young and old will return to Jesus. So bring what you heavenly come to the time for offering, uh, we want to remind you that this is the first Sunday of the month of September, and just as we would normally do if we were meeting in person, we do still take an extra offering up for some kind of mission work that's happening in the Wimberley area. So uh, this month, our altar rail offering for communion will go to Bright Beginnings Preschool to um, help with their scholarship fund and to help uh, with the upkeep of the, the school so that they can pour the resources that they bring in directly back to the children and to the needs of those children. So we will be supporting this, uh, this amazing ministry, this amazing preschool, and all of those who are a part of it with this separate offering that we will take. So uh, know that uh, you're invited to give, not just what you normally would on any given Sunday, but to, to go that extra mile of giving, to give just a little bit more specifically for this great ministry. With that in mind, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, receive now our gifts. May you use them in ways that we cannot even understand to bring your kingdom to this place. May you bless the ministries of Bright Beginnings Preschool. May you bless the ministries of this church. And God, uh, may you bless this world around us that as we seek to engage it in your name, God, we would see your kingdom sprout up among us. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves
Please join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now a new king came to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He said to his people, the Israelite people are now larger in number and stronger than we are. Come on, let's be smart and deal with them. Otherwise, they will only grow in number. And if war breaks out, they will join our enemies, fight against us, and then escape from the land. As a result, the Egyptians put four men of forced work gangs over the Israelites to harass them with hard work. They had to build storage cities named Python and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were pressed, the more they grew and spread, so much so that the Egyptians started to look at the Israelites with disgust and dread. So the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. They made their lives miserable with hard labor, making mortar and bricks, doing field work, and by forcing them to do all kinds of other cruel work. The king of Egypt spoke to two Hebrew midwives named Shifra and Pua. When you are helping the Hebrew women give birth and you see the baby being born, if it's a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, you can let her live. Now the two midwives respected God, so they didn't obey the Egyptian king's order. Instead, they let the baby boys live. So the king of Egypt called the two midwives and said to them, Why are you doing this? Why are you letting the baby boys live? The two midwives said to Pharaoh, Because Hebrew women aren't like Egyptian women. They're much stronger and give birth before any midwives can get to them. So God treated the midwives well, and the people kept on multiplying and became very strong. And because the midwives respected God, God gave them households of their own. Then Pharaoh gave an order to all his people, throw every baby boy born to the Hebrews into the Nile River, that you can let all the girls live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, today we start a new sermon series that I'm really excited about called Getting Into Good Trouble. We're going to look at what good trouble is and how it is that we as the church get into it together and uh, as individuals. Today we're going to focus on a story from Exodus, but before we do that, I want to share with you why it is that we're, we're talking about good trouble. You see, I've, I've, I've been stuck on this phrase ever since I heard it. Uh, it, it comes from the late Representative John Lewis, uh, who is very fond of saying this and using it over and over in his public addresses, where he would tell people that my philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, then say something, do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. 
Urban Dictionary defines good trouble as that kind of trouble you can be proud you got into. My friends, good trouble is biblical. Good trouble is something that we see from Genesis on in the stories of the, the characters of Scripture, the, the example that is set by the people of God throughout the biblical narrative. We see it in the stories of people like Moses' mother and sister when uh, they, they make sure that, that Moses is not killed with the rest of the Israelite boys, but instead safely makes it from the Nile River to Pharaoh's daughter's house. We see it in the stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel as they stand up to the oppressors around them in an oppressive empire and refuse to capitulate, refuse to bow down, refuse to worship any other person or God other than Yahweh. We see it in the prophet Elijah as he stands up to the forces and prophets and priests of Baal and those who would seek to not just twist the, the religion of the people of God, but twist and distort um, the very people themselves into something different than God intended. We see it in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who constantly is breaking down the standards, the norms, and even the interpreted laws of Scripture if it means reaching out in love to the one who needs it the most. We see it in the lives of Mary Magdalene and the other disciples as they seek to follow that example set by Christ, as they themselves get into good trouble. Good trouble is pulled right from the pages and stories of our faith. Good trouble is part of what it means to be a disciple. And good trouble, my friends, is what we are called to get into today. So we have this story. This story from Exodus 1. This story of two people, Shifra and Puah, the midwives of the Hebrew people, getting into good trouble. And I love this story, and it is unfortunate that it is not very well known. It seems like with many of the stories of women in Scripture, it is one that we quickly read over, and then we even quicker forget. But Shifra and Puah are heroes. Shifra and Puah's story needs to be heard and needs to be told because they get into good trouble and they set the example for us as well. They encountered something that was not right and even though they placed their very lives on the line doing so, they said something. They did something. So let's set the scene just so that we are understanding what's happening here. First off, uh, as, as Exodus starts, we see the relationship between the people of Egypt and the people of God in, in tension and then get worse and worse. We hear that a new pharaoh has come into power, one that did not know Joseph, which means that he did not know why the Israelites, these non-Egyptian people, were in Egypt and were occupying so much of Egypt's space. This new pharaoh did not like the Israelite people, um, did not think they should be there, and was afraid of them. Afraid that they would rise up at some point and conquer Egypt. And so he and uh, his, his soldiers and his jailers began to not just oppress the people of God, but enslave them and seek to control their population through genocidal means. We see this in the story of Shifra and Puah, as Pharaoh tells them that when they are helping the, the Israelite mothers-to-be deliver their children, if the baby comes out as a boy, they are called to kill it before it ever has a chance to actually live. Now, just as a reminder, Shifra and Puah, well, they're midwives, so they are women. It would be one thing for a man, especially an Egyptian man, to stand up to something that Pharaoh said. He would probably still be thrown in jail and maybe killed for it, but it would at least make sense in this day and age. But for a woman, especially one who is not even Egyptian, to work against the will of Pharaoh, to lie to Pharaoh, 
This was just unheard of. It simply did not happen, and yet it is exactly what does happen. These Hebrew midwives, knowing that their very lives are at stake, lie to Pharaoh, refuse to obey him, and help the boys live. Now, up to this point in the story, at least the way that I've described it, this sounds like just a, a, a really nice story. Honestly, it's a story that we might look to in history and say, wow, someone did a great thing here. But there's not anything that's really faith-based about it. God hasn't shown up in this story in any way yet. And so the question out there, for me at least, is how does this engage our faith? How does this um, act as a story we are supposed to follow as people who are trying to follow our God? Well, there's one phrase in the midst of this story that is so important and that gets to this idea that good trouble is something they got into because of their faith. And it's the phrase that, that explains why they did what they did. You see, Shifra and Pua did not um, save the boys and help them live because they'd taken a Hippocratic oath to do no harm. They didn't save the boys because they had deep loyalty to their people and didn't want to see their people oppressed. Either of these, honestly, would have been great reasons to do what they did. They would have been legitimate excuses for them disobeying Pharaoh, in my opinion. But that's not why Scripture says they did what they did. No, Scripture is clear that Shifra and Pua acted as they did because they respected God. They revered God. Their faith would not let them allow this injustice to happen in front of them and would definitely not allow them to participate in it. They had to act because they knew that Pharaoh's order, it was not of God. That God is a God of life. That God is a God who wants us to thrive. Pharaoh wanted them to kill. And so they got into good trouble. And friends, this good, godly trouble is exactly the same thing we are called to get into today and throughout our lives. Now luckily, and Lord, please keep it so, none of us are ever going to experience Shifra and Pua's um, personal ordeal. None of us are going to have to deal with what they dealt with in standing up to someone like Pharaoh because of this specific decision. But the truth, my friends, and you know it as well as I, people encounter injustice and oppression every day in our world. Still in 2020, injustice and oppression is everywhere. And the hard truth is that we not only know this, we not only witness it, but for the majority of us in the church today, we actually benefit from the oppression and injustice of others. Whether we're talking about racial, socioeconomic, gender-based, sexuality-based, or ability-based oppression, it's there, it's prevalent. And we know it. My friends, we as the church have a responsibility here. A responsibility to get into good trouble and to stand against the oppressions and injustices that we encounter. Even and especially when they come from places of authority like Pharaoh himself. But the truth is that we have a choice. We can either follow Pharaoh's orders or stand with Shifra and Pua. We can either allow injustice to happen, even benefit from it, whether we recognize it or not, 
or we can act as our faith demands. The choice is, is ours. And my prayer for all of us is that this day and in all our days to come, we will be a people who choose to be like these Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. That we will be a people who choose to do what is right, even if that places us at odds with the pharaohs of the world. That we will be a people who when we see something that is not right, when we encounter something that is not fair, when we witness injustice in our world, we will say something, do something, get into good trouble, necessary trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ. So may we engage in this work. May we do so walking hand in hand. Amen. hear this benediction. Go from this place as a people ready to get into godly good trouble, ready to see and encounter those places in our world where things are not right, not fair, not just, and to say something, to do something, to be a part of God's work in changing this world by getting into good trouble in the name of our God. So go knowing that you do not go, you do not say, 
and you do not do alone. For we do this work together, and we do this work alongside our God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.